how do I write a commercialization plan? Is actually one of the most common questions I get all the time from startup founders. A commercialization plan is an essential part of your SBIR application. It outlines your go-to-market strategy and demonstrates the commercial success of your proposed innovation. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you should approach your commercialization plan, especially if you're going for an SBIR application to the National Institute of Health or the NIH. And this is gonna be great for a phase two application, a direct to phase two application, or a fast track application. I'm gonna tell you all of the key components that you have to include in this draft and what content that you need to include in each section so that you can prepare a super strong draft on your first attempt. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Stacey Chin from KeepYourEquity.co and our goal is to help science and tech startup founders secure non-dilutive funding so that they can bring their innovative ideas to the commercial market. We specialize in these programs called the SBIR and the STTR. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link in the description to another video. If you have seen our other videos, you'll know that the federally funded SBIR program is meant to support research and development efforts for science and tech startups or small businesses so that they can create innovative and commercially viable products and services that would benefit the public and simulate the US economy. Therefore, it is so important to have a strong commercialization plan in your phase two SBIR application. It shows how the R&D efforts outlined in your research strategy have real merit to be successful in the commercial market. The commercialization plan should offer a clear and concise description of your proposed innovation's market potential and what is your planned go-to-market strategy that your startup will consider so that you can generate revenue and take advantage of different business opportunities. It should also highlight the anticipated competitive landscape and also outline the resources you're going to need to implement this plan. And by having a really well-developed commercialization plan in place, you can demonstrate to the NIH reviewers that you have a sound business strategy and know exactly what to do to bring that innovation to the commercial market. And this will increase your chances of funding award. And you will also attract the necessary resources to bring your idea and your startup to the next level. So if you're preparing a phase two, a direct a phase two or a fast track application to the National Institute of Health, you are required to include a 12 page commercialization plan with your SBIR application. I'll leave a link in the description to the NIH's guide on how to approach the commercialization plan. But let's break down what it says in this video. There are seven main sections of the commercialization plan, and they are one, the value of the SBIR or STTR project, expected outcomes and impact, two, the company, three, the market, customer and competition, four, intellectual property protection, five, the finance plan, six, production and marketing plan. And last but not least, number seven, the revenue stream. So these seven categories are actually the exact main headings you're going to use in your commercialization plan. And I will strongly recommend to break down each section even more using subheadings because this helps to organize the draft and it will be much appreciated by the SBI reviewers when reading your application. So in the next part of this video, let's go over what content you must include in each of these sections so that you can prepare a really strong commercialization plan. But but before we jump into it, please like this video and subscribe to this channel so you can learn all our tips and tricks on how you can secure non-dilutive funding for your startup from programs such as the SBIR and the STTR so that you can keep all your equity throughout your fundraising journey. And don't forget to check out our website at keepyourequity.co where you'll find more advice, templates, and resources to support you in this fundraising journey as well. All right, let's get into it. So the first section is the value of the SBIR or a CTR project, expected outcomes and impact. And in this section, you will want to discuss the significance of the problem you're trying to solve, summarize what you're going to do in your phase two SBIR efforts, and explain how these efforts are aligned to your go-to-market strategy. Then you should always relate how the innovation is successful ties back to the problem that you're trying to solve to begin with. Now, I know that is a mouthful. So think of it this way. This section is essentially the background of your SBIR application to justify why SBIR funding is necessary to bring your innovation to market. Now, your research strategy should already have a very in-depth discussion of the background. So when preparing the section in your commercialization plan, you don't wanna copy and paste that section in there, but rather you wanna summarize and figure out a way to have it complement that in the research strategy in a more concise way and by pivoting that narrative towards a commercialization. To do so, you wanna give an overview of your plan by emphasizing what are your go-to-market efforts that you plan to pursue. The next section in your commercialization plan is the company. And here, I'd like to break this section down into three subsections. Company overview, team details, 
and completed milestones. The first thing you want to do is to introduce your company. You should answer questions like, what is your mission? When was your company founded? What problem is your company trying to solve and why? Here, you can also include your corporate objectives, core competencies, the present size of your company, your annual sales level, and the number and types of employees you have. And finally, you can also include a strict description of the origins of your startup. Next, give an overview of the core competencies of your team. In this section, you'll want to emphasize why you have the best team to go about your proposed efforts and to bring your innovation to the commercial market. Then you'll want to mention who are all the key members of your team that will help out in these phase two efforts. And this should be a mixture of expertise that include technical, clinical, business strategy, finance, regulatory, legal, and many more. So for each member of the team, mention their name, their degree, their role in the company, a paragraph of their past experiences and successes, and then at the end, one or two sentences summarizing their role in these SBIR efforts. You can also mention board members, strategic advisors or consultants, and other collaborators. If you're curious to know how to go about structuring your phase two team, check out the link in the description to another video. And finally, you can wrap up the company section by describing what key milestones that you have already completed to date, along with what milestones you plan to hit in the future. Here, be sure to mention any history of previous federal or non-federal funding that you've already secured, any IP or intellectual property that you already filed, or if you're selling any current products and have significant sales. You can also inform the reviewers how you plan to transform your R&D-based company towards a successful commercial entity. Now, the third section of the commercialization plan is the market, customer, and competition. Here, I also like to break down this section into subsections by using the following subtitles. The market, customer, competition, competitive advantage, and go-to-market risks. First, define your targeted market. In other words, who will benefit from the proposed innovation? And this will help start framing what are the key pain points in the market and set the narrative of how your innovation will solve that particular problem. So when identifying this market, it is important to be very specific. Mention how large the market is, how many people are impacted by this problem. And to do so, you'll want to use quantitative metrics and statistics to describe the market because this helps to emphasize the demand and need for the innovation. And finally, you'll want to describe how much money is in this market. In other words, what's the total available market, or TAM, the served available market, or SAM, and the servable obtainable market, or SUM. And by describing the TAM SAM SUM, this is an excellent way to represent the metrics that define the customer and revenue opportunities within your particular market. Now, when describing the customer, ultimately your goal is to provide a compelling case as to why the proposed innovation is needed and how it would benefit the target customer. Here, it is important to provide a concise description of who is this targeted customer for the proposed innovation. What is the pain point you're trying to solve for them? And how would your innovation help your customer out if you are successful? Next up is describing the competition and your competitive advantage. First, explain the competitive landscape by identifying the top three to five competitors in your space. Make sure to touch on the problem they're trying to solve, what are their downfalls, and emphasize how your innovation is an improvement. So when describing your competitive advantage, state the unique value proposition and the features that make your innovation innovative. In my SBI proposals, I like to dedicate a really hearty paragraph that explains just that. In fact, the first sentence of the paragraph can simply just start with a sentence, this technology is innovative because, and then fill in the blanks. You can also state there's no one else in the market that's solving this problem by doing A, B, and C. And then afterwards, you can mention your technology's unique features in a simply bullet point list. Finally, to wrap up this section, you'll want to mention three to five go-to-market risks and your plan to mitigate them. Typically, these can be either IP risks or competitive products from entering the market, customer adoption risks, or costs. The next section is your intellectual property protection or IP protection. Here, you want to describe how you plan to protect your IP that results from developing your innovation. Ensure you mention whether you have filed patents or plan to file IP. You also want to mention the status of those patents, whether they're provisional, granted, or in a PCT. And you can even take this one step further to discuss how you plan to expand your IP portfolio by filing additional patent applications and whether you plan to conduct a freedom of analysis to verify your innovation can be sold without infringing on another party's IP rights. You can also elaborate on other actions you plan to take to implement a barrier against others aiming to provide a similar solution compared to yours. Now it's time to move on to the finance plan. In the startup world, you'll likely need more money than the allocated SBIR budget limits 
in order to successfully bring your product to the commercial market. So in this section, you'll want to explain the necessary financing that you require to commercialize your innovation. To do so, you'll want to describe your plans to raise additional funding so that you can prepare to launch your product and begin generating revenue. So for example, you can mention whether you have started talking to angel investors or venture capitalists or industry partnerships that might be interested in investing in your startup upon completion of your phase two efforts. Here, I encourage startups to prepare a Gantt chart of their short and long-term financing and fundraising goals in relation to their SBIR efforts. The sixth section is your production and marketing plan. Here, you'll be discussing how you plan to position your innovation so that it is ready to go to market. So for example, if you have a physical product, discuss how you plan to manufacture it and to scale up production. Would you consider in-house manufacturing? Or do you need to seek a contract manufacturer? If you're developing a product that needs regulatory clearance, what are the necessary steps will it take to get that approval? And finally, for the marketing plan, you'll want to describe the steps it will take to market the innovation. So for instance, do you plan to use social media, partner with key opinion leaders or KOLs, or would you attend local and national conferences to showcase your innovation to potential customers? And this is also a good section to explain how you plan to sell your innovation, with some examples being either licensing, software as a service, or SaaS, or SaaS model, direct sales, or B2B or business to business. And then at the end of this section, I like to mention your exit strategy, whether you plan to get acquired by a larger player or exit via an IPO. And the seventh section, is all about the revenue stream. So in this section, you want to hash out a plan as to how you plan to generate revenue for your startup. And I like to break this section down into two to three subsections, a revenue strategy overview, an associated cost section, and a three to five year financial projection. First, give a brief overview of your revenue generating strategy. Keep this concise, but be specific. So once you do, the next subsection is to highlight the cost associated with how you plan to sell your product. And finally, I like to include a three to five year financial projection of how much revenue you anticipate generating after completing the phase two efforts and then launching the product or service to the market. Here, it is nice to include a table like a pro forma and then walk the reviewers through your assumptions in your financial model. And so with that, those are the seven sections along with the content in each section that you'll have to include in your commercialization plan if you're preparing a phase two, a direct to phase two, or a fast track application to the NIH. Thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. If you found any of these tips helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us out a lot. And don't forget to comment below with any questions you might have about the commercialization plan. And of course, don't forget to check out our website at keepyourequity.co where you'll find more advice, templates, and resources to help support you throughout your non-dilutive fundraising journey. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in a video very soon.